It is a war that has certainly caught the world's attention. Russia invading Ukraine. To help us put some historical perspective on the, all this, Dr. Rosa Aloisa, Aloisi, a associate professor at political science at Trinity University. She is an expert in international relations. She's our guest on KSAT Q&A. Professor, thank you for joining us. Is it as easy as saying Vladimir Putin is trying to put the band back together, that he's trying to put the Soviet Union back together since Ukraine used to be part of the Soviet Union? Is it that simple? Uh, it's, well, it's not that simple. I'm sure in his mind it is that simple in the sense that uh, uh, I believe that Putin has this idea that Ukraine and Belarus uh, should still be part of, uh, uh, of the Soviet bloc of Russia. So we do have that sense that uh, in a way Putin is trying to expand uh, his territorial sover sovereignty towards the countries that he believes to still belong to, to the Soviet Union. Um, we should not forget that if we look at the history and the most recent history of Russians mingling into Ukraine's affair, since 2004, we have had uh, Putin very closely looking at the elections that were taking place in Ukraine and trying to maneuvering whoever was going to be in charge of Ukraine's government. Again, Crimea's annexation was just one step. Uh, and so probably this is something that uh, uh, it was about to come. Professor, we talk a lot about the sanctions, and that's a lot of what the international community is talking about. What can we do? What else can America and its allies be doing? What tools do we have left in our toolbox when it comes to Russia when this invasion is continuing as it is? Yeah, uh, as you were mentioning, Courtney, uh, economic sanctions have been uh, uh, one of the uh, best tools uh, uh, that the international community has to face this type of challenges to the international stability of, uh, of order. Um, what else we can do? Um, uh, we can definitely say that the United Nations Security Council uh, on Sunday uh, held a meeting uh, trying to condemn uh, Russia's actions uh, uh, into Ukraine. So, and uh, given the fact that uh, the United Nations Security Council wasn't able to reach a decision because Russia is a permanent member and vetoed that decision, the next step now is on the table, the next decision now is on the table of the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, a strong condemnation from the countries uh, on the United Nations General Assembly and a possible uh, isolation of Russia would be one of the best step to undertake short of any military intervention, which right now seems not to be on the table of the leaders of the United Nations. There's talks that are going on between Russian and Ukrainian diplomats. Any hope that a ceasefire at least will come out of this or some sort of impasse will happen? Well, uh, from my understanding, uh, we really know very little about uh, the outcome of those peace talks. So they seem to have been interrupted at a certain point yesterday, European time. Um, uh, and they then uh, uh, started again, but the outcome seems to just be indicating that there are some points in common in agreement. But uh, uh, when it comes to the, cease, to the ceasefire, going to your point, Steve, I think that one of the most important aspects that we need to understand is that at this moment in time, uh, despite the peace talks, uh, uh, Russian troops are moving through Ukraine. So there is an uh, um, indication that uh, uh, some troops have moved from Kiev and they are now bombing other areas uh, that are not farther away from uh, from Kiev, uh, Kharkiv uh, and Keratorm are two of the cities that have been under attack. And most of those attacks are against the civilian populations, uh, not necessarily military targets. So the ceasefire seems not to be working if that was one of the points discussed at the peace talks. It is a huge humanitarian crisis we're talking about. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees counted about 500,000 refugees right now. The borders, uh, uh, Belarus-Poland borders uh, are uh, um, taken, uh, uh, let's say, by the refugees that are trying to flee Kiev. 
Kiev, most of the most of the civilians are just are just trying to go into Poland. Um, uh, most of the countries uh, uh, in Europe uh, are uh, um, have said that they are ready to welcome more refugees to come. So it's a huge humanitarian crisis uh, that should be uh, put. Uh, uh, on the uh, agenda of the United Nations General Assembly, uh, first and foremost. One quick last question, uh, Professor. The International Criminal Court investigation that's going on, what is the timeline for something like that? Because obviously so much goes into these things. So um, Karim Kam, which is the uh, International Criminal Court uh, prosecutor, uh, said that he started an investigation into war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, the move uh, is being uh, uh, particularly welcomed by those that work in international criminal justice. Uh, but uh, uh, sp speaking to your question, it might be uh, a long time before an investigation solidifies, especially because we are in an ongoing situation and gathering evidence about uh, uh, crimes that are that are being committed against the civilian population is particularly difficult. Sure, this is a first step. We are short of speaking of aggression, again, because uh, Russia is on the United Nations Security Council, so it would be very difficult to discuss uh, a crime of aggression. But it's definitely a step toward the right direction. It's a man that a lot of people have studied and, and tried to predict. Is there any predicting what Vladimir Putin will do? Not really. Um, we all hope that Vladimir Putin uh, will come to uh, uh, to uh, a, a rational point of view and uh, will just stop uh, any further action. But uh, it is very unpredictable. We do not know its real in its real intentions, uh, uh, and we really uh, we really fear for especially the uh, states, the governments, and uh, the neighboring countries that are not. NATO member that might be fearing uh, some some attacks. Dr. Rosa Aloisi at Trinity University, thank you for your insight and your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Take care. We'll be right back.